I took out the gold card from American Express one year ago and it has since become my favorite credit card due to offering some pretty cool benefits and at the same time being completely free in the first year. However, as you approach your anniversary with this card, you might start wondering if it's still worth it keeping it beyond that first year and actually paying the £160 annual fee that Amex is asking. That's exactly the question that I was facing and for me it was even a little bit more complicated because I also hold the Amex Platinum card which costs me a further £575. So I was thinking is it worth for me to pay for both cards? In this video I'm gonna walk you through how I use the benefits of the gold card, how much value exactly I got out of them in the first year and whether or not I decided to keep the card and to actually start paying for it. Spoiler, Amex did offer me a retention bonus to help convince me against closing the card, which I'm also gonna show you. But first things first, let's get into the benefits. This is not intended to be a full review of Amex Gold, instead I'm just gonna focus on the benefits that attracted me to the card most and which I felt like were missing from the Platinum card that I already had. I do have a full review of the Amex Gold credit card on this channel and I'm gonna link to it in the description to this video so that you can check it out later. In the meantime, the biggest draw for me to the Gold card was the higher earning rate of American Express membership reward points, which I consider to be the most valuable reward currency in the UK. So first of all with Amex Gold you're gonna earn three points per pound spent on Amex travel website where you can book hotels and flights. On the one hand three points per pound is the highest rate at which you can earn Amex membership reward points on a UK credit card but on the other hand it means that you have to book your flights or hotels on Amex travel. I generally dislike booking via travel agent and always try to book directly on the airline website because if you buy your ticket from an agent and then you need to do something with it, like change it, cancel it, upgrade it or anything, you cannot go directly to the airline, instead you have to speak to the travel agent and the travel agent in turn will talk to the airline, which makes the process extremely inconvenient and even further some of the things that would have been done in minutes if you had bought your tickets directly from the airline, the agents sometimes can't do at all. However, there are a few cases when I do actually book via Amex Travel. Well, first of all, if I'm buying a last minute cash ticket that I'm not intending to upgrade using air miles and the price of that ticket on Amex Travel is the same as it is on the airline website, then I am gonna book it via Amex just for the sake of earning those three points per pound. And since the ticket is again last moment, I consider the probability of me needing to do something with it, like change it, to be quite low. And secondly, I use Amex Travel when I need to buy a refundable ticket with British Airways. As you might know, most tickets that BA sells are non-refundable, however if you go on BA.com and you switch the flexible ticket toggle, you will discover that BA charges outrageously high prices for its refundable tickets, to the point where the refundable fare will be several times higher than the non-refundable one. However, there is actually a middle ground which not so many people seem to know about. BA has a semi-flexible fare where your ticket will be refundable, it's just you will have to pay a refund fee of 25 or 50 pounds or such depending on your cabin. The catch is that fare cannot be booked directly via, via BA.com because it's only available to travel agents. But that means that you will be able to see that fare and book it if you search on Amex Travel. And I do take advantage of this opportunity once in a while if I'm booking for something like very much further ahead and I'm worried about my plans changing and also provided that that semi-flexible fare is not too expensive comp compared to the non-refundable one. So all in all, over the past 12 months, I spent around £3,500 on Amex Travel, which earned me a little over 10,000 Amex membership reward points. And then next, Amex Gold gives you two points per pound spent directly on the airline websites, which I think is pretty amazing because that is the way that I prefer to book all of my tickets. So again, over the past 12 months, I spent a little over £6,000 with Amex Gold on airline websites, which earned me slightly over 12,000 Amex membership reward points. And then you also get two points per pound spent on foreign currency transactions. This one is usually not a good deal because at the same time, Amex is charging you a 3% fee for that foreign transaction, which makes the value of the points that you're earning quite questionable. However, as I looked over my previous statements, I realized I did have a few foreign transactions like that, which happened mostly because I either didn't have any other card on me or the other card didn't work, basically a few one-off unplanned cases, and I spent a total of 370 pounds this way, which earned me 740 points. Finally, you get one point per pound spent on anything else, and in my case, again over the past year, I put slightly over 16,000 pounds of spend through the Amex Gold card in other categories, which earned me roughly 16,000 points. But that is not all, because for every 5,000 pounds that you spend on the Gold card, you get a bonus of 2,500 points. You can get that bonus up to five times in one membership year, which means if you spend over 25,000 pounds on your gold card in one year, you'll get an extra of 
12,500 membership points. So in my case, as you can tell from what I already said, I did spend slightly over 25,000 pounds on that card in my first year, which means I got the full 12,500 of bonus points. Now let's try to pull all of this together. As I said, I earned a little over 10,000 points on Amex Travel, then another 12,000 points from directly shopping with airlines, and then another 16,000 points for all other purchases. Finally, I got another 12,500 of bonus points, and all of this totals up to 52,000 Amex membership reward points in one year, just for purchases. To be clear, I was not eligible for welcome bonus when I took out the gold card because I was already holding the platinum card, and this amount also also doesn't include the retention bonus that Amex gave me that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which I'm going to talk in detail about a little bit later on. So how much are 52,000 membership points worth? Well, if we use the conservative valuation and say that you're going to take your points, convert them to Avios and then from Avios to Nectar, and then spend at Nectar partners such as Sainsbury, Argos and eBay, your points are going to be worth slightly over 340 pounds. To me, however, they are worth significantly more because I normally spend them on travel by exchanging them to airline miles and hotel points. Points, so I value them at, at the very least 10 pounds per 1000 points, which means 52,000 Amex membership reward points are worth to me well over 500 pounds. But in any case, even if we use the conservative valuation of 340 pounds, that still means that the points that I earned more than twice cover the annual fee of 160 pounds pounds that I would have to pay starting from the second year. Also, it got me curious about how many points I would have actually earned if I had used to spend the same amount of money across the same categories, but on the Amex Platinum card instead. So the Amex Platinum card offers a much more modest earning rate and it would have earned me a little over 30,000 points, which is over 20,000 points less than the Amex Gold. And then if I went even further and used the absolutely free American Express Rewards credit card, that doesn't have any annual fee and earns you one point per pound spent, I would have earned a little over 26,000 points, which is only half of what Amex Gold earned me. The next perk of the Gold card that I was pretty excited about was the delivery credits. You can get five pounds off your delivery purchases that you put on Amex Gold twice a month, which means you can get up to 120 pounds back over the course of a year, assuming that you're using Deliveroo at least twice a month. And I actually made a pretty good use of this. So if you log into your Amex account on your desktop and then you scroll to the bottom, to the bottom of the main page, you can actually see how much money in total you saved from using the various offers on your card, which the delivery credit is also one of. So in my case, this shows that I saved 140 pounds over the course of the year. I can tell you that the majority of the savings is through delivery credit. I actually got 110 pounds back this way, which means I made an almost full use of this benefit. And then the rest of it, the remaining 30 pounds were due to some other random offers. I sometimes compare the delivery credit benefit from the gold card with the domestic dining credit that the platinum card gives you. I mean, clearly the dining credit on the platinum card is higher. It's 100 50 pounds it's also available to you all at once so you can use it as you please instead of being broken down into five pounds so so to say installments but at the same time the delivery credit feels much more i don't know day to day it's like with the platinum card and the dining credit i wouldn't really randomly go for lunch to the kinds of restaurants that the credit can be spent at. Whereas with Deliveroo, I feel like I use it much more often. And then finally, the next big benefit of the gold card is the complimentary lounge access. So with this card, you get a priority pass membership and four complimentary lounge entries per year. Again, for a card that's completely free in its first year, this benefit seems just like unbelievably generous. However, in my case, I did not use it at all due to two factors. One is, as I mentioned, I already hold the Amex Platinum card, which while it carries a much higher annual fee, it offers unlimited priority pass membership with also the ability to bring in one guest. So it was just much easier for me to use that instead of just tracking how many passes I have left out of four on my gold card. And then secondly, at the beginning of the year, I qualified for the silver status with BA, which means I have lounge access for myself and also one guest when I'm traveling with a One World airline. This actually means that now I have to rely on priority to pass much less. So in theory, if I were to close my Amex Platinum card, it is entirely possible that the four complementary entries that the gold card provides by a priority pass would be enough for me to cover the cases when I'm flying a non one world airline in economy. Well, maybe, I mean, maybe it wouldn't cover every single case, but I suppose it's not like I have to go into the lounge every single time I'm at an airport. So those were the three benefits that attracted me to Amex gold despite already having the platinum card. Conservatively, I got 480 pounds of value out of them. Firstly, my membership reward points were worth 
340 pounds, as we said, if we convert them into nectar, then another 140 pounds via Amex offers, the bulk of which were the delivery credits, and then zero for lounge access, because as I said, I didn't use the lounge passes that came with the gold card at all. So recently, as my anniversary with the gold cards was drawing closer, and with it, the time to pay the 160 annual fee, it's now actually only a few days away, I realized that I had four options in front of me. Option number one is to close the gold card and just keep the platinum card that costs me 575 pounds a year, which I, by the way, I have had for almost two years now. This option means that I lose the benefit of earning the Amex membership reward points at a higher rate, as well as the delivery credits. The second option is to close the platinum card and keep the gold one, which means I only have to pay the annual fee of 160 pounds, but at the same time, it means I lose the unlimited lounge access, the dining credits, and the hotel benefits, which are the three most valuable platinum benefits for me. The third option is to keep both cards, which means I don't have to give up any benefits, but I do have to give up 735 pounds in annual fees. There is actually a fourth option, which I was looking into, and that is close both of these cards and take out HSBC Premier World Elite MasterCard. It is a credit card that I already reviewed on this channel, and again, I'm gonna link to that review in the description to this video so that you can check it out later. But in short, why was I even considering this option? Well, that is because with the HSBC card, I would be eligible for a welcome bonus of 40,000 HSBC points, which are worth 20,000 airline miles, including Avios. So in that way, HSBC is kind of similar to Amex, where you can convert their points to various airline and hotel partners. However, the selection is somewhat more limited than it is with Amex. So the idea would be to switch to HSBC, which would earn me flexible reward points, give me lounge access as well, and then two years later, I would again become eligible for the welcome bonus on the Amex Platinum card, thanks to staying away from membership rewards earning credit cards from Amex for two years. However, I ruled out this option because I realized that by not having the gold card for two years, I would be missing out on more points than the welcome bonus from the Platinum card could potentially earn me later on. So before picking between the three options that I had, I decided to check if Amex could give me a retention offer. So a retention offer is either a chunk of points or a discount on the annual fee that Amex can give you to try to convince you to keep your card for one more year. Most often it comes in the form of spend a certain amount of money in a certain time period, let's say 2,000 pounds in two months or 3,000 pounds in two months, and then in in exchange will give you a chunk of points such as 10, 20 or 30,000 points. By the way, these numbers I just completely made up for the sake of an example. So I went to the online chat in my Amex app and told the agent that I'm considering closing my gold card and asked if they could offer me a retention bonus. After a little bit of back and forth, the agent informed me that they are prepared to give me 20,000 Amex membership reward points. And as you can see, I accepted straight away. The reason for that is I was surprised that that bonus came without any conditions attached to it. I didn't have to spend any specific amount of money on the card or, or formally commit to keeping the card for one more year in exchange for this bonus. In hindsight, I think that I should have asked for a challenge where I have to actually spend a certain amount of money in a time box kind of period in exchange for this bonus being higher. But I mean, what's done is done. Anyway, this 20,000 point retention bonus already covers the majority of the annual fee that I have to pay for the gold card, so I decided to keep it for one more year. As for the platinum card though, my anniversary is in November, so in the meantime I'll spend the remainder of my credits, mainly the dining credit, and then most likely I'm gonna close the platinum card for now, well, unless they give me a super big retention offer or something. Closing the card does not mean that I don't find the platinum card valuable anymore, it's just that I wanna see how well the gold card could substitute the platinum card for me. Will the four lounge passes that the gold card provides be enough in combination with the one world status that I now have? Will I miss the dining credit and still keep going to the same kind of restaurants even though I now know that I have to pay the bill out of pocket? Will I find the hotel collection that comes with Amex Gold as valuable as the fine hotels and resorts program that comes with Amex Platinum? If I do realize that I'm missing the platinum benefits, I will consider getting this card again, but in the meantime, I'll just concentrate on other products. Let me know in the comments what you think about my decision and which card you would have picked or would you would you have decided to keep both of them? We've talked quite a lot about membership reward points and I said multiple times that I consider them very valuable. If you are curious as to why, check out this video where I talk about the best way to spend the American Express membership reward points in the UK. And also consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy the content, that would mean a lot to me. But for now, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.